Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming tonight to our third Thursday demo in July. It's hard to believe that it's July already, and convention is right around the corner. Uh, before I introduce our featured artist superstar tonight, I want to remind everybody to put your questions in the Q&A, and then we'll get to them as um, appropriate um, time breaks allow with Robin. Um, and also stay tuned afterwards. I have a couple of announcements I'd like to have everybody here. But without further ado, let me introduce our featured artist, Robin Lee Mikowski. Um, Robin is person extraordinaire on our board. Um, she has served for years as exhibition director, she couldn't stay away and signed up for communications director when we needed somebody to come on and do that this year. So she does a little bit of everything and I am so grateful for that. Um, Robin is an award-winning professional artist who specializes in watercolor. She's an instructor, an illustrator, and an author. I bet you didn't know she's illustrated more than 30 children's books. 16 of which she also wrote. So that's a big job. You've got one there, Robin. Ta-da, ta-da. She currently serves, as I said, as our director of communications and um, was our exhibition director from 2015 to 2020. In addition to many tasks and projects throughout the year, she produces our newsletters. Um, she is going to create our annual exhibition catalog. She did that for us last year too. And um, we're so grateful. Robin's conceived, curated, organized and produced many themed art shows in her own New Mexico gallery for organizations and for the Elliott Museum in Stewart, Florida, where she had the position of art studio and exhibition coordinator from 2012 until 2020. She holds signature membership in with FWS, with us, National Watercolor Society, New Mexico Watercolor Society, and the Western Federation of Watercolor Societies. She's represented by the Lost Art Gallery in St. Augustine, Florida, and her work can be also seen on her website, rlmartist.com. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. See what five bucks will get you? That was a nice introduction. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, first, I would like to say thank you very much for coming. Let me see how many people are here before. Okay, wow, cool. Um, who brought the wine? Anybody bring the wine? No. All right, uh, I'd like to do a couple of shout outs. Um, we started a basic membership program uh, this year and we've had uh, two join this year. Um, of course, I'm not gonna be able to, Sue Oler and my friend, uh, Barbara um, McGuire from New Mexico. Barbara said she was gonna be signing on, so hopefully she's here. And we have three new members this year, Marlene Howard, this month, Marlene Howard, Deborah Murray, and Cheryl <laughs> Plagstra, question mark. You know who you are, but I wanted to give a shout out to our new members. Welcome, we're very happy to have you. Um, let's see, I was gonna promote uh, Nancy um, Murphy Davis and I, Nancy is our exhibition coordinator. Um, she and I are going to be doing a talk, a presentation at the convention on how to make your work stand out to the judge. And um, some of this is kind of like what we're doing now is kind of like a, a, a preview of some of that. They're going to intertwine a little bit, but um, I have a PowerPoint I'm going to run some video I'm going to run if there's time. And also I can go into Photoshop and actually do some manipulation of some um, images if there's time. So uh, any questions, if I, the only time I won't answer the questions is if they're running, if they come in during the video. So, all right, let me see what I can do here. Share my screen. Do you want me to ask them to you, Robin? Or are you gonna kind of monitor that? Too? No, you can't, no, heck no. <laughs> okay, I didn't think so, but it sounded like maybe. Oh. Okay, let me start. 
All right. The reason I picked this as a topic, and I talked to Jackie about this uh, when our original um, demonstrator fell through, uh, is we get, I've seen since 2015, everything that comes in for all the shows. Um, people say, well, why didn't mine get in? Why didn't mine get in? And I can say a lot of it is because of composition. So what we wanted to do tonight was, and we were trying to get people also away from taking stuff off the internet that doesn't belong to them and painting it and saying, well, here's my painting. No, 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 that, that doesn't work. That's not yours. We're going to uh, go through and, and um, talk about composition and how to make, and why isn't this working? Oh, there it goes. Oh. Okay. Dictionary defin definition of original. Okay, it has to be original for FWS. And uh, um, the, the most important thing on this um, slide is an original artwork, writing or the like, as opposed to any copy or imitation. So, uh, we want it to be all yours and we want it to be fresh and new. It, it can have been in another show, that's fine. Okay, I can't read with the pictures up here. Can I turn these pictures off in the corner? Yes, I can. I know what I look like and I know what Jackie looks like, okay. Okay, the dose of reality. When you're trying to stand out <clears throat> from other people painting the same subject matter, it's all been done before. Anything that anybody has ever painted has been painted a thousand times by every artist on the planet. Well, here's my bowl of fruit. Here's my flamingo. Here's my, well, okay, you got to make that bowl of fruit and that flamingo stand out from all the other ones that other people paint. Um, and okay, nothing in any category that hasn't been done countless times. Okay, my opinion, this is my opinion, the most original paintings are abstracts because they're done intuitively and designed on the fly. Uh, they're throwing stuff at the paper, they're, they're doing stencils, they're doing all different kinds of stuff and uh, on the fly, so there's really no way for any two to be alike. Whether they're good or not, that's a different story, but uh, there are elements, uh, design elements in abstracts that make one stand out from the other, definitely. We are blessed to have some amazing abstract artists. Okay, and many of us take lots of photos, and I personally paint from my own photography, uh, and paint either directly from them or combine the elements of different images into one composition. Oops. Come on, you turkey. Isn't this going to be fun tonight? Okay. There we go. Wait a second, I missed one. Okay. There are plenty of us who still think it's okay to take stuff off the internet. Call it our, it's not. It's not yours if you didn't create the original source material. Um, so it's not your photograph or not your setup or not yours. It's not your, it's so yours and somebody else's. Oh, but my friend gave me the photo to use. You can use it all you want and you can learn from it, but you can't claim that it's your original work if you did not create your source image. Okay, and you certainly cannot enter it into our jury show. Some, some jury shows will let you enter it and they will ask you for, if it's uh, used by permission, they will ask you for a permission slip from whoever took the photograph. But if they lent it to, to you, they can lend it to somebody else and the same painting can be in one show. Okay, originality pertaining to the show rules. Okay. The reason I put this, okay, this is important, the 2023 prospectus, because it's going to change next year. It changes every year. And people read it once and think they read it every year. They didn't. You have to read every word, every time, every, and there's redundancies from here to here. Because if you didn't catch it here, 
hopefully you'll catch it here. Um, must be your own idea. We already went through that. If you paint in a series, this is kind of important. If you paint in a series and you use the same reference photo used um, and submitted to FWS, and this is 2021, next year it'll be 2022, um, your new painting must in some way be substantially different from your prior submission. This applies regardless whether the painting was accepted into a show or not. Um, we keep the rejects. We know what's been uh, submitted before, so we have something to go by. <clears throat> Reference materials all must be by you. What we don't allow is purchased or stock images. If anybody can go on the internet and buy that same image, um, you're painting the same thing that somebody else is painting. Photos taken by others, even with permission. Photos found on the internet, of course. Okay, this, this is important as well. If you are painting um, a photo from a magazine or a book, that's not your, even if it's like the cover of a magazine, that's not your image. If that's the main character in your painting, if it's laying on a coffee table in the background, that's perfectly fine. That's fine. Okay. Now, vintage heirloom family photos. We allowed them. Uh, it got away from us. Um, some of us are of the age where it's entirely possible <laughs> that we took a photograph 50 years ago, which is now a vintage heirloom uh, family photo, and um, that you can use <laughs> if you if if you know unless we question you know where did you get that um, those the really old ones you but if you didn't take the photograph you can't use it. But my photos suck. How many times do I hear that? <laughs> I have heard that so many. Okay. Yes, it helps to have an excellent quality photo to paint from. But what I see on, on workshops, students coming into class or workshop with a terrible inkjet photo on printer paper, off color, lines running through it and halfway through the yellow rain drive. So there's no way you can get a good painting from a crappy photo like that. Okay, now I did work in printing um, and I know how to create a decent photo to, to, uh, to work from. Um, so make sure you use photo paper or presentation paper, not copy paper, because the ink sits up on top of photo paper and presentation paper, but it soaks in like, like a paper towel to copy paper. That's why they look so dull and, and nasty. Make sure the print heads are clean, you won't run out. Um, mid photo or stripe, and you print the image as, lar as large as you can. Print a whole eight by 10 or however big you can get it on eight by 10. Uh, I have a photo printer that goes to uh, 13 by 19, which is nice. Now I normally don't print a resource photo, uh, source material photo that big. No, my photos suck, not just the printing. Okay, yeah. Uh, I get it. Other artists uh, get great photos to work from. How do they do it? It's most likely you are not looking at the photo, but you're referring to the composition of the image. That's what looks better than yours. Uh, this is what we're going to focus on tonight. Your photos are likely better than you think they are. You just need to find the gem hidden in the clutter, and we're going to go through some of that. The appeal of working from other people's photos is that they already did all this work. They composed it. Uh, we're going to talk about composition, cropping, editing, finding the best composition in just about any photo, just about. I have come to the realization after many years of doing this that some really nice photos are better photos than they will ever be a painting. If you're struggling with something that you consider is a good photo, and it's not working as a painting, let it go. <laughs> uh, another key is to take many photos of the same subject, not just one. And uh, we'll go through this uh, a little bit later. You can also take a video, if something really cool is going on, you, you can take a video with your, with your phone and you can pull a still image from the video. It's really easy. 
Um, you just play the video on your phone. You click, you can see the little pictures going across the bottom. You click on one of them, take a screenshot of it, voila, there you go. Okay. Now, before you start getting your stuff together, you've got your photo, uh, you're, you're real happy with it, you wanna paint it, but before you start cropping, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna enter it? Are you going to, what are the size limitations? Do you have an existing frame you wanna use? Then you work backwards. Uh, are you planning on entering uh, what are the size restrictions if you're gonna enter it? Okay, if you're painting for a specific show, consider the area that you live in and what most likely comp your competition will be. If you paint birds in Florida, you are going to be in a big, big pool of other artists. Almost every year, we hear uh, the judge say, boy, there was a lot of bird <laughs> entries, <laughs> and, and, and there usually are. So um, if, if you're painting a bird, you better make sure that that bird, nobody's ever seen anything like it before. Um, your search for the best, most unusual composition uh, will be more involved and it will depend on how many source images you are working with. Um, if you're working backwards to use a specific frame, like I enter a Western Federation of Watercolor Societies and they want you to send the painting matted but not framed, they frame them on that end and then take it out of the frame. And the smallest frame size, uh, mat size is 16 by 20. So I work backwards from 16 by 20, subtract the mat width and that's how big I'm gonna paint because it's a lot cheaper to send them that way. And hey so, Robin. Yeah. We've got a couple of questions already. Oh, cool beans. Okay, so the first one says, what if the source image is a building, statue, landscape, as in a designed garden? These things have all been designed previously by another artist. How is that okay when taking a photo of a movie TV show is not okay? Yes, uh, the garden is okay. The garden's gonna change every day. Um, the building is a building. If it's out in public like that, it's and we also had the eye question a few years ago, and some people are really going to hate me. The um, eye question, the statue thing. Oh, so really? You're copying somebody else's artwork, right? So, but uh, I was shot down, so statues are still good. Um, I mean, how many fountain paintings have we had? How many statue paintings have we had? And uh, some of them are fabulous. So. Um, uh, there are certain challenges and you can best the challenges. It's just other people's photos or other people's artwork. And again, if it's in incidental, if you take a picture in a museum of people looking at artwork, it's a picture of people looking at artwork. It's not a picture of somebody's painting. If you're copying somebody's painting, that's what the difference is. But if you take a photo of say something in a movie or on TV or whatever, that's not okay. Nope. Because, because why? Because if you remember um, the, the DVD thing used to say uh, in the beginning about mm -hmm. the privacy and plagiarism, right. you know, $250,000 per, <laughs> right. per fly. Because <laughs> they're copyrighted. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, the second question says, my husband took the picture, is that okay? Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> because <laughs> the husband was the one framing it up and cropping it and whatever, right? Now, if, if you completely set it up, uh, I, I can only assume, okay, assume that if you're in the photograph, if it's a photograph of you <laughs> that, Unless you went to great extremes, uh, got a, the, the tripod, the tripod and, mount. And, the, and the selfie stick, and now selfie stick, that, that's cool. But um, if you're in the photograph, we assume that you didn't take that picture. So um, we may ask about it. I mean, it may be obvious that, uh, you know, it was your setup. It, you put yourself in the picture and you more than likely, but what I would, if you hand your husband your phone, you know, uh, we could do a little bit of don't ask, don't tell too. 
Now, if he goes and tells everybody, oh, look at this, you know, you're at the reception and there he is and he comes and oh, you won this nice award. And oh, he says, I took that picture. <laughs> but to yeah. be safe, but to be safe, just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Because don't. we had someone disqualified a couple of years ago who made an announcement that her daughter took the painting or took the picture that she painted the painting from. Yep. So. And she won an award and it got rescinded. Okay. So, and that, now somebody's asking, what if you took the photo with your spouse's phone because you didn't have your own or the battery is gone? That's fine. That's okay. Because they're, they're never going to know picture. whose phone it came off of or whose camera it came off of. No, that's perfectly fine. I've, I've had that happen to me a couple of times. I didn't think, okay. it, but I, I borrowed a phone to take a picture because I didn't have mine with me or whatever. So, okay. Yep. Okay. That's it for questions for right that's, now. That's splitting hairs. <laughs> I know. And again, but uh, less, better less safe than sorry. Yep, exactly. Okay. Cropping in and editing. Um, every year in Ruidoso, New Mexico, I don't know where my captions, oh, crap. Let me go back. I told Jackie I try not to cuss. I'm, I'll try, but no, you know. Um, <laughs> we may have to bleep out, bleep you out on certain parts of the recording. That's what. That's why we got Ron. So uh, <laughs> as long as he doesn't bleep it out with fart noises or something like that, then it would be bad. That's a possibility. Um, <laughs> okay. Every every year in Ruidoso, New Mexico, they have the chuck wagon cook-off. And and you want to find, oh my God, source material everywhere you turn. Okay. So I took this picture. And when I'm going through the photos, I try to think of what's going on, you know, what the caption would be, and where's the point of interest. Okay. I like to call this one micromanaging because that's what it looks like she's doing. <laughs> He's given him heck. Okay. I didn't say it. Um, okay. Now, these people here, here's the crop. Here's the crop. Uh, notice the red going through. That's something else I noticed. Um, and uh, you want to pull, you know, as many colors through as possible. So that's stuff to look for. There's a bunch of clutter down here. I got rid of it. Don't need it. Um, and do we need these people? Well, they are currently enthralled with something else. If they were looking at what he was doing, then it would be great because then we'd have all kinds of people micromanaging. But here's the point of interest right here in this particular photograph. I got, I have so many, oh my God. Okay, Timor Martin, Timor, hi, or Timor Martin, please. Uh, okay, this is the original setup. And the interesting thing about this, I, I got these uh, glasses on eBay, which I get a lot of my stuff on eBay, my, my collection. The green one came in uh, broken. So I said, oh, well, that isn't really what I said. I can't say what I really said, but, and then it occurred to me, okay, the party got a little out of hand. So this is what I did with the setup. And this is what I did with the painting. And this is, uh, uh, too many martinis on uh, aquaboard 18 by 24. And what I like to do is uh, since you don't really mat aquaboard, uh, especially if you don't frame it under plexi, which you know, there's no point in painting on aquaboard if you do that, uh, I paint it to look like it's got a mat on it. But then I use the mat to come in, the white of the mat to come into the painting here. And I also take some elements off into the border. So that's just uh, the way I design stuff. Okay. We went uh, apple picking, they picked them, we bought them uh, up in high rolls in uh, New Mexico. And I had never seen pears on a tree before. And they were hanging way back behind the uh, table that we were picking our apples off of the bags. And this was the original shot. Well, <laughs> A, no way I'm going to paint all those bricks. They're not interesting. This thing is hanging right in the middle. Uh, it breaks a lot of rules. So what do you do? You crop in. And here is the um, composition. And I painted this. I have actually used this for workshops a couple of times. 
<clears throat> on uh, aqua board. And I don't paint the bricks now either. I just paint it uh, just a flat color, not flat, but not bricks. <laughs> okay. I uh, went to see my brother in Chicago. We went to this Two Lights Cafe in uh, Old Town. And of course, I'm taking pictures. I take them in bars, I take them in restaurants. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one, but this is the original photograph. And I took a bunch. But what I liked about this was the lead in of the lights, top and bottom. Uh, but where's the point of interest? Okay, the point of interest to me was the interaction between the server and the customers and other people are interested in it too and plus i really liked it's hard to see from here but um her face is distorted through the wine glass so that was a challenge that was fun okay so this is cropped to 16 by 20 and i didn't like all the top on it and I even took a little off the bottom. So I, I cra uh, cropped it down to 14 by 20 and I just put a big border on it. So now look at the lights coming right in, leading you in. Okay. And here, this there's more emphasis on what's going on here, which is what I really like. <clears throat> so decide, when you're deciding what to paint or how to paint it, find what's important in the photograph. Here's the painting, um, the regulars, happy hour number 35. I'm on number 42 or 43 right now. Uh, Version of that? No, oh. happy hour series. Oh, just a happy hour just series, gotcha. Series. Yeah, gotcha. no, no. Um, okay, now we have another question here. Okay. The question is, if I ask artificial intelligence create an image with specific attributes and use the image as the starting point for a painting, is this my original work? Kind of. Um, if you, as, lo as long as it isn't using attributes from uh, somebody else's work, um, that, that whole AI thing has yet to be resolved. <laughs> and I don't know if it'll ever be. I, we just watched Terminator 2 again. I strongly recommend it. Uh, so um, if I don't think there's any difference between that. Well, I, if, you're, if, you're, if it's using other pieces of other people's images and photographs, then no, then it's not yours, then, you know. But if AI comes up with a composition, and then you... I, I can come up with a composition in Photoshop right now using pieces okay. of my own photography. Now, okay. if you feed the photographs in, if they're your photographs and you feed them in, that's a different story. Okay. But if, yeah, it's, the, this is still... It's uh, a whole new thing. Ball yes, wax it is. yes, it is. And it's very, very scary. Okay, composition basics. Include a variety of shapes and sizes and proportions. Odd number of items in a painting works better visually than an even number. And I have some photographs later if we get if we have time that I'll <laughs> prove that point. Um, if the composition feels overly geometric, add some organic shapes. So visual contrast is what you're looking for. Alternate your brushwork. Uh, your focal point should have harder edges than your uh, perimeters and your um, uh, negative areas, negative space. Uh, pay attention to where your light edges are and your dark edges. Uh, you'll pop your, your lights off a lot better with dark behind them and light behind dark. So it's, it's just like the core shadow on, on the earth where at sunset and, and dawn, uh, it's always darkest, always darkest before the dawn. Um, the higher the contrast, the more striking and dramatic the work will be. Okay. I found this online from this guy who did this YouTube video, who took one of Andy's workshops. <laughs> and he's posting Andy's uh, um, value studies 
like, you know, look what I can do. Is that Andy's value? It's study Andy's. Or it's Andy's. No, it's Andy's. Oh, geez. Um, okay. Value study is a quick basic, basic sketch of the composition. The white of the paper is value one. Okay. And watercolor paper is never white, white. Um, the darkest areas are whatever number you're, you're going for. Now, he's only got three here, really. He's only got the white, the dark, and the medium. He doesn't have anything else. Um, done in a workshop by, by Andy. And whoever, whoever got, was lucky enough to get into his workshop, he will be teaching this. And notice the triangles, the, the repetition of triangles through the whole thing. The repetition, repetition. So that's an important composition aspect as well. Okay, if you wanna, I don't wanna say the word cheat. Uh, simulate, yeah, that's a good word. Uh, <laughs> simulate a value study in Photoshop with posterize. Okay, this is a painting I took of a desert willow. I, I mean, a photo I took of a desert willow, and this is the color. And then I sent it to grayscale. Now, uh, you can go do as many levels in Photoshop as you want. Okay. Okay. How, how, okay, how do you get to it? Okay, it's image, which is up here, uh, adjustments, posterize. That's how you posterize stuff. Um, and I would strongly rec recommend taking the color out of it and you'll see why in a second. Okay, uh -huh. level two. Level two, black, white, not a moss. Okay, now you're, oh, but I see all those colors. Yes, but what, the, what this does is it puts the closest values together. That's what it's doing. And you are really only looking at red, green, and blue dots. Where they overlay one another is where you get the different colors. So it's RGB, it's red, green, blue. This is just black and white grayscale. Level three, you can see you got your white, your black, and your medium. This is like Andy's. Now he picked something that was mostly light in the background. Uh, I have a tendency to go dark with my stuff, but look at how many, how much more complicated this is than this. There's four levels, white, light gray, dark gray, black, but look over here, holy cow. You'll never learn a value study doing this. Value study is black and white. It's one color and paper, that's it. That's all it is and different. And for those of us who don't have the Adobe suite, I know that there are other uh, yes. programs out there, correct? That's yes, there's Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R, that's uh -huh. free and you can, use it online for free and you can save the work. See, some of them want you to save the work to their site. You don't wanna do that. You wanna be able to save the work to your own computer, but you still have to know how to do it. So we're gonna go through a little bit of that. Okay, so here's five levels. Three grays in the middle, your white, your black, but that's almost a, a whole photograph right there. Now, the higher the levels you get, the more it blends the colors. This is still pretty distinctive in the areas, but it's like it's way more than three or four, you know, medium tones. It's got you got your dark, your white and a whole bunch of stuff in between. OK, so how do I learn good composition? <laughs> I, I want to see how many people are on and uh, how many people are off at the end of this, but um, <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to hear it, but the best way, two, two of the best ways to learn composition, take a photography class. They have, we used to do um, iPhoneography at the Elliott Museum and it was always packed. And it was always packed with people our age, <laughs> shall we say, um, and, it really did great. And I would always print out, they would send at the end of, and it was a one day, and they'd send me one photograph and I would print out everything and we'd have a little show for them in the art studio. And they loved it. And then they'd go home with a, a matted photograph. So um, 
with a photography class, you get a quick lesson. So you're not spending a ton of money on, on art supplies for creating failed paintings. Uh, there's failed paintings and there's learning and it's all really learning. Um, plus you're creating better reference images for your paintings. One day classes are available. You just, you gotta look it up. Some of the senior centers have stuff, but uh, uh, some of the, the colleges and the high schools even have this. Okay, here's the one everybody hates. Take a drawing class. Forget about color and focus on placement of shapes. And I always hear, oh, but I don't like drawing. I just wanna push the paint around. And this is what I always tell them, you're not gonna push it into the right places if you don't know how to draw. So, um, and if you knew how to draw, you knew when you were making a mistake. So uh, um, those are my two recommendations for, for learning good composition. And it's all also uh, the ones that get in the shows and the ones that don't get in the shows. <laughs> yeah, that's, they're both valuable information. It's also, you know, could be how happy the judge is that day. Okay. National, NWS, is, um, hi Judy, is uh, doing a reciprocal show with uh, Scotland. And uh, Scotland already sent theirs pre-pandemic to, uh, the, to San Pedro. So they had their part already, but they've been waiting until this mess cleaned up, cleared up. And so I want to enter this. This is an actual work in progress, literally. Uh, the reciprocal, I want to enter. All the images must be eight by eight. The image wow. size must be eight by eight. Wow. The paper can be a little bigger or the paper can be exactly eight by eight and they'll float it. Um, and it has to be on paper. It can't be on aquaboard, can't be on UPO. Um, so I'm tearing my paper. I tore my paper as you shall soon see. Uh, and they'll frame them on the other end. So the, the paintings are going and the paintings are coming back. They're for sale in, at National because they'll be online in an online show. If it, if it gets in, I don't know if it's gonna get in. Um, and uh, they won't be for sale in Scotland. So I guarantee somebody's gonna want my painting and I'm gonna have to turn around and ship it back to Scotland. So, okay. But what am I gonna paint? Okay, I did some homework. Uh, the show is going to be in Edinburgh, and I have very good friends. Uh, he is from Edinburgh, and um, so I wanted to make it part of my happy hour series. Not that they have any reputation or anything, or I do, uh, as that has worked well for me and appeals to most people. If they don't get accepted, the gallery will take them, and if they do get accepted and don't sell, the gallery will take them. So I'm I'm good. So I looked up Scotch whiskey brands and. What specifically was made in Edinburgh is Drambuie. Blech. <laughs> it's like cough syrup, but okay, people like Some it. people really like that. I know. I, I like it without the honey in it. Um, <laughs> it's a liqueur made from scotch whiskey, honey, spices, and herbs. It's uh, poured neat or straight or over ice uh, in Scotland. And the name means a drink that's satisfied. This is important. Take notes. Uh, in Scott's Gaelic. But how do we do it here? Okay, we do it the same way or in a variety of cocktails, in particular a rusty nail, which is both Scotch whiskey and Rambouille. <laughs> Off the total wine for supplies. And that's exactly what I did. Okay, now I wanted some cool glasses. Look at the shapes in these and boy, I'm cussing myself out now. But um, and I've been wanting these big ice ball uh, things. So this set came with two glasses and two ice ball molds, ta-da. So, and it was cheap, it was 14 bucks. Okay, the setup, this sounds like the sting. Da -da 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 -da. Um, okay, believe it or not, this is 8.30 in the morning. Because that's when the light is coming through. Um, Okay, two, I can submit two paintings. So I decided to do two setups, uh, something that may appeal to both sides of the pond, even though only one can go to Scotland, if 
any go. Um, I like to shoot in natural light and I, lo I love backlighting. Uh, at 8.30 in the morning, the light is decent on the porch. Shooting glass is tricky because of the reflections and what's seen through it. That's why this is here. The, uh, the black, because I didn't want <laughs> lizards and flowers and all kinds of stuff showing through the glasses. That just more stuff to paint. Besides, I got these nice shadows, which I was real happy with. Um, I thoroughly look at my uh, photos as I'm taking them so I can move stuff around. Compositions are rearranged. Uh, need to remember this composition has to be square when I'm placing the objects. Okay, here are my main. I could have done two snifters, I could have done two of these, but these are too close in size. So remember what we said about the different shapes. Okay, and one, two, three, odd number. So this is this I'm checking to see if I got it right. Okay. Add more elements, pour and shoot. I shot more than 20 images of this. This one. Okay, the next one is the rusty nail. Okay, it's 8.30 in the morning. It was 88 degrees. I didn't want to put the ice in until I had everything set and I had checked everything. So here's the setup. There goes the ice. And this is the composition I ended up with. Okay, I got about 15 images to go off to Photoshop. Okay, first assemble, disassemble the still life, rescue the ice spheres, which I did. I put them in my water cup and pour the drinks <laughs> in the jar for happy hour. Except when I tasted it, oh my God. <laughs> I, I, a rusty nail literally would taste better than, oh, it was like way too sweet for me. Okay. Now I'm, I'm in Photoshop, putting the images. Now, these two I liked. First round, round, haha. -ha. Um, I ended up with two images out of 20 I can work with. The things to look for. Okay. Flat, flat, flat. A little bit of an ellipse right there, a little bit of an ellipse, but look at how much more interesting this is. <clears throat> also, I should have turned that label away because look at all this stuff I have to paint. Oh my God. Okay, but these these were my two favorites. Uh-oh, do that. Selfie bomb, photo bombs. So this is where the editing comes in. I did not want myself in the painting. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm talking about, scrutinizing. Okay, now we're in Photoshop. Here's the original size. Here's the square. Okay, and then here's the other one. Okay, I used the crop tool. I set it to eight by eight. You can grab the bottom of it and, and turn it just a little bit because you don't want, uh, if this top is flat, you need it to be horizontal, okay? This is a different angle. So you can get away with this not being flat. But even this, if you put a ruler on that, it's gonna be pretty, the ellipse is gonna be pretty straight across, okay? Here's the, oh yeah. The camera exaggerates perspective in everything, especially buildings, especially tables, especially, you know, phone cameras exaggerate it more. So that's a lot of stuff you have to, to look out for. Okay, composing. This is a uh, crop. That's what that says right there, crop. Um, oh, and notice, the original size, this is 56 inches. That was the original size, but it was at 72 DPI or it's PPI, pixels per inch. Um, so I have to reset this to eight by eight. And when I do, this DPI number is gonna jump up to 
almost 300. So that's that's more what I like. But this isn't going to move. The only thing that's going to move is this ruler. It's not going to look like you did anything. So. Okay, I'm going. This is the, that border thing I was talking about. I'm going to take an inch of the background off. So I put my guides in there because I want to see what I have left to work with and where I'm going to stop drawing. So I don't need to draw anything out here, anything out here. This, don't need any of that. So there's my composition in the middle of this inner square. And that's what I was looking for. And this one too, but look at how much more interesting this one is than this one. Okay. I make templates. Um, make a template. I go to image. It always starts at image. I, I didn't capture that. And then it goes to stylize, find edges. And there's my template. So I use graphite paper and transfer the image. Okay, ethics check. Is this cheating? And I can hear <laughs> rattling of Rattling and shaking of heads all over the place. Um, okay, this is how I look at it. If there was no electricity and you could do this from scratch yourself, it's a professional shortcut. If you know how to draw and can completely create it by hand, and this is just the way I look at it because I used to be a purist and draw everything out and it added so many hours. If you could not do it without the computer projector or other electron tool, it's a crutch. That's what I'm saying, learn how to draw. But I don't need to learn how to draw because I have, well, when the electricity goes out, you're dead in the water. And I used to insist on being a purist. I drew out everything. I drew it all on tracing paper so I wouldn't mess up my watercolor paper. And then I transferred it. And it would literally, even for a smaller painting, smaller size 18 by 24, it would add 20 hours at least. So um, this method cut, cuts out about half the time. I still spend time cleaning up the transfer drawing and it takes time to do this stuff. Uh-oh, here's the other one and it's not square. What to do? Well, let's start cropping and see where we are. So I got the crop tool, I straightened it out. So the ellipse again is straight across. Anything that's straight uh, should be horizontal, except this tabletop right there, that didn't need to be. Okay, so I'm looking for the composition. I don't like this. So all I have to do is drag this whole square over until I find one that I do like. Much better. Look how much I tipped it. That's how much I tipped it to get that, that flat across there. Okay, we're getting there now. I'm much happier with this composition. And notice there's only one thing that's not cut off. This is the only whole object in the whole composition. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you add the, the napkins, but there's five objects, odd number. Voila. This is, I'm checking the, the borders again because I'm not painting that or that or this back here. And I have this cut off across the bottom. Well, you'll see it in a minute. Okay, there's my template for satisfied. Remember what Drambuie means in Scott Gaelic? So that's satisfied. And here's nailed. Remember what kind of drink it is? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I get my titles. Okay, this is a video. Well, there's there's four of them. <laughs> oh boy. So let's see what we got going on here. Okay. Ready to rock. I have my template. And now I need a piece of paper to paint it on, transfer it to. I have this piece of scrap of uh Fabriano Artistico, 
which is wonderful. Now, I only paint on the front. You can paint on the front or back, however you want it. But um, I'm used to arches, and arches is not sized the same on the front <clears throat> as it is on the back. So if you paint on the back of arches, you're going to get different results than if you paint on the front. So I mark the back so I don't paint on the back. So what I'm going to do now is I need an 8 by 8 piece of paper. Uh, I've got the watermark on this side that I don't really want on a really small painting. And this, this scrap is uh, 10 inches wide and I need eight by eight. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna tear this, this from this end. <clears throat> and go to the bottom. I like to paint off the decal, so I'll, I'll save the decal. Go to eight. Go to eight. Um, the decal is kind of uneven, so I just, if you go from the mold mark, that'll work too. Eight. I'm going to lightly score with a blade that's not real sharp. <laughs> it's really not real sharp. Okay. Take that. I'm going to fold it away from the score. Nice and even, nice and even on both sides. So that should be good. I'm going to fold it from the front to the back. You can feel it breaking already. And give it one more the other way. I'm going to give it one last one this way. Okay. Always tear it from the front. That's a lie. Tear it from the back. Well, uh, okay, now that's only, <clears throat> now it's eight by 10. I need it to be eight by eight. So let's see. Sure, didn't tear it crooked. I'm going to go from the mold mark up to eight. Mold mark up to eight. Same thing, same thing. Lightly score, and I gave it a double whack last time because it's really, really dull. That change this blade. Okay, better dull than sharp. Away from the cut, toward the cut, gently. A little bit of pressure. Away, toward. Now I'm tearing it from the back because it's a small piece. Okay, I'll use that for tester paper. Now, if I want to see how square I got, go corner to corner. Let's see, eleven and three eighths. But you said eight by eight. Well, this is corner to corner, kids. Corner to corner, eleven and three eighths. Eleven and three eighths. Not too shabby. Here we go. Next step is to transfer. Any questions so far? You have some questions, but not related to this. Okay. Okay. Um, so I thought we would hold those. That's fine. Right. We'll just keep Temple going. Trim down. I've got it attached to my paper. With the hold the top over, and. I trace around the masking tape with a pencil and where the the template ends up in case I have to take it off. If I have to take it off, I can put it exactly in the same spot where it was. And <clears throat> if I take it off, then I'll notice that I didn't get half the writing on this label. So if I have it in exactly the same spot, I can flip it back over <clears throat> and I can even though I've already painted on it, doesn't matter. Matter of fact, that's better. 
um, I can transfer this writing again, truncated. I have my, I, I drew a line, one inch, you can't, you can't really see it too well here, but one inch, because um, I only want a little bit of background. Oh, I see something else I have to do. Because this, through that glass, is going to be not dark like this is. So that's where the artist comes in. I got to remember to do that. Now I have my piece of feral or Sally wax free, very important wax free transfer paper. I'm going to put this up. What I don't want to do is slide it. I want to gently place it because if I slide it, that's what happens. Now, that erases, which is the beauty of the wax free. One with a little harder eraser, it'll 90% of it will come off, but I pressed pretty hard when I slid it. I'll make sure that it's graphite side down. You place it gently. Don't slide it. Do as I say, not as I do. How many times did your mother tell you that? <laughs> when can I start drinking and smoking? Never. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that worked well. Okay. I don't smoke, by the way. All right, now I'm using a red pen. Why a red pen? So I know which lines I already went over. And if you start a line, make sure my head's not in it. You start a line, finish it. Don't, don't do this half and not that half, because you'll forget. Ask me how I know. Okay. And this napkin, there's no way on God's earth I'm doing all that happy crap hole. It's busy enough as it is. Okay, I'm going to do this tabletop. Now, before I get too much farther, and I'm, I'm pressing to transfer, but I'm not pressing to incise. You do not want to incise the paper. You do not want to have an indentation from your pen. I'm going to make sure it's even going. Uh, before I go any further. So then I will continue transferring. And it will be messy when you take this template off and take the transfer paper out and whatever you do, don't pull it. If you're lucky, this should take you an hour to an hour and a half. And I do transfer all those little shapes and all these little all that stuff. And I'll get to that and I'll show it to you before I start painting on it. Any questions about this stuff? I think somebody asked you what brand you used. Of brand, brand transfer paper? Yes. There are only two really good ones, a Saral, S-A-R-A-L, or Sally's. Uh -huh. Sally's. Sally's. Sally's is 18 by 24 sheets. So yeah, baby, uh, you can always cut it down, but <laughs> it's really hard to tape it together and make it bigger. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I have both. And I say you can use them until they don't work anymore. <clears throat> Anybody else? 
you well we going back to the the cell phones and um the uh -oh. ai and stuff we can handle those at the end i think all right yeah that's fine maybe they'll fall asleep between now and then <laughs> oops well for some crazy reason okay. no 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 not this one is this the one okay i'm done transferring yes let's see what we got Took about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes to transfer. It's not too bad and it's not too filthy. But what I'll do is I'll take this kneaded eraser and I'll dab up the mess that I don't want in the white border. Most of the other stuff's going to disappear because I got a lot of paint on these. And I will have to spend probably another hour and going over these lines, not too heavy. Okay, get my source photo out to um, emphasize those lines. I wanna take the uh, I'm going to take the graphite off as I go. I did not transfer this borderline. I went back in and measured and added it afterwards and screwed it up here. No big deal. Because the the inch from here to here is not necessarily the same as the inch from here to here. So if I transfer the line, the whole box is going to be crooked to one side or the other. So I wait until I, I have it on here so I know where to stop. I don't have to, um, I just know where to stop drawing. So then I drew this line afterwards, and that's that's what I'll end up filling in. Let me do a little bit of that now. Someone is asking Robin why you're doing transfer paper instead of a light box. It's three hundred pound paper. <laughs> Gotcha. I'm working on dry paper. And I this don't own a light box. box. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a better reason, right? This will have many layers on it. Go forward and no, I don't tape it off. I don't care if the, the border isn't exactly straight. Nothing is. And this is just the first layer. And over here, all I have is this. We also, Robin, have a question about how you change the image to the stylized line drawing in Photoshop. Um, I'll go back to that slide. Okay. You always start on image and then uh, it's filter. Okay, it's oh. begun. I want to finish the other one first. This is this is what I'm trying to accomplish with that border thing. This is uh, very very from my Happy Hour series. This is on Apple Board. Most of them are, and uh, it's not quite done yet because I got to this stuff and it was too much to deal with, so I just left it alone. 
<clears throat> but there's my border, my one inch border. And that's, that's what I was going for here. The bottom, not so much, but just around the edges. That's it, that's my transfer. All right, I'm gonna finish the other painting before I work on this one. Okay, Jackie, how are we doing on time? We are, hold on, I put my watch in the drawer so it wouldn't make any noise. <laughs> We're at 8.05. Okay, so how are we doing, how long is this supposed to be? Well, I think we could probably um, go to 8.30 if people are willing to, I mean, I how have, long do you think? I have, let me ask you this. Uh, people said, why aren't we gonna be able to watch you paint? Well, if you watch me paint, you'll know why. Um, <laughs> I have a, like a five minute video after this of me painting on the other painting. And, or I have, I can go right into Photoshop and I can mess with some images and I can show everybody how to do this. So what would be more valuable? Both. <laughs> All right, video next. And if people don't want to stay till the end, then they can drop off, I guess. Well, for some crazy reason, people want to watch me paint. Okay. Here's my big brush. See, that's a 12. <laughs> that's the Here's truth, my too. little brush. That's only a three out. I do have a four out. And here's, you can tell this one is really worn out. Now, what brand are those blue brushes, Robin? Oh, boy. They are, wait a second. Be they are um, and Dick Blick Wonder White uh, Scholastic. They are terrific. I took um, Allie uh, Kavanaugh's workshop, online workshop uh, with National, and that's what she uses. And they, they're they inexpensive and they, um, you know, she paints a lot on aquaboard, so they get beat up. So mm. if you're gonna beat up a brush, you're gonna beat up a cheap brush. Right. They perform very well. Good to know. And these, were the long handle uh -huh. that I kept knocking into my overhead light with. So I cut uh -huh. them off and put them in the pencil sharpener. <laughs> 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 so so uh, no, no more long handle. I want the short handled ones. Aren't you smart? So that's what that is. I do the same I thing with chopsticks. Around this year. <laughs> you guys, bring your sleeping bags. This is my, let me go for one of my big brushes. This is my national, one of my national entries. I don't know if I'll get the other one done, but this one looked more interesting. So I figured I'd get this one done first. Or the, um, and they're just entries. I have no idea if they're gonna get accepted, but um, These are for the Scottish um, Reciprocal Exchange from the Scotland. So There's a tiny bit of masking on this, but normally I don't really use a lot of masking. I paint around the whites. Are you having fun yet?
stay awake. So what you do is slowly build up by layer. Oh yeah. Your color. Correct. So how many layers would you say you have on a painting? How many stars are in the sky? I don't know. Oh dear. Many, okay. many, many. That's a smart Alec answer. <laughs> <laughs> I guess to ask a question like that, that's the, the answer I deserve. Until until I'm happy with it. Okay, now to fun stuff. Are you referring to your reference photo yep. printed out or on the computer? Yeah. Yep. Pardon? Yes, it's. It, I printed it. You printed it? Yeah. Of late, I've been, been asked on more than one occasion, do you really think like that? <laughs> Yes. Why does it take you so long to finish a painting? Well, it should be obvious by now. If I charge by the hour, it'd be 3,000 bucks. Right. This beats Brahms lullaby and a melatonin any day. I listen to books on things. Do you? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Nancy Turner. That doesn't distract the voice in your head talking to you about how you should be painting. Oh, no. No? No. I wondered about that. I can't watch or I can't write and listen to the books, but I can certainly paint. Wake, wake up. How do you think I feel? <laughs> I'll only torture you for another minute. Hopefully nobody will ask me for a painting demo again. <laughs> In a way, I'm doing a workshop in December, January, for the West Pasco um, Art Guild. That's the Tampa area. About, well, I gave them a couple options, but their first choice was the glass and shiny stuff. Do you have these guys like the captain, Steve Rogers, who can finish a 22 by 30 in an hour? Oh my God, I can't even finish drawing an hour in an hour. And I'm looking at all those little tiny shapes. All right, that's enough torture for one. That. <clears throat> all right. And this is where we are. As of this afternoon, there's the source photo. Here's the painting. So are we there yet? No, but we're getting closer. There's a lot more of this stuff in and a lot more that needs to go. And you can see what the, the stuff I avoid, <laughs> the 
those labels. Oh, God. Till the end. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So I'll go into Photoshop. Stop share. Now, wait a minute. Before we go on, there's some questions oh, I yeah, think yeah, pertaining yeah, yeah, yeah. to this. Um, someone comments that this is a great painting and hard to believe it's only eight by eight. And then Helen is asking, are you looking at your values painting or your reference photo when painting? Reference photo. I don't do value studies. <laughs> I don't. Okay, don't tell you. Do a value that. study of that thing? No way. No Marilyn, Marilyn Leadman says, hi, Robin, excellent demo. Thank you. Are you um, painting from the photo or from your imagination? Yeah, my vivid imagination, but no, I got a photo. Okay. <laughs> um, and Roberta asks, you said you transfer all of those tiny glass reflections. Yep. As you are painting, how do you keep up with where you are in the sketch or photo? It's the drugs. Not the drink? No, no. <laughs> you really wouldn't keep up with it. No, no. I uh, uh, I just follow shape by shape by shape. And when I get tired of doing one, I move to another. Helen says, thanks for the plug for the West Pasco Art Guild. Dina says, sorry if it's already been answered, but what brand of paint do you use? Uh, Daniel Smith, um, uh, Holbein, uh, Windsor Newton, uh, depends on the color. Gotcha. I got tons. As do we all. Um, someone else is asking photorealism versus abstract. Does a limited palette improve the overall painting? Um, Are you using a limited palette with this? That's the small one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Here's the big one. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Are oh, those wait, different colors? On, are those oh. different colors on each one? One's a transparent okay. palette and one's a, um, a, a non, not necessarily transparent palette. Gotcha. Uh, the, the first one I showed you, the Chief Joe's palette, that's, that's a um, transparent palette. Okay, and then somebody's asking, uh, she missed the beginning, what kind of paper do you paint on? Um, I have traditionally painted on arches, 300 pound cold press. I have recently discovered the Fabriano uh, Artistico soft press, 300 pound as well. So I've been doing a lot on that. It, it's really easy to, to scrub back. I mean, it's very responsive responsive so yeah, I really okay like okay so let's go on now all right share screen uh, I guess I have to bring it up first or she blows Okay. I went into Photoshop, I mean, into my stash. And I, if I showed you my stash, you wouldn't believe it, the photos. Um, and I just grabbed all the orchids. I just grabbed them. So um, these are uh, orchids from, oops. Can, did you guys see? Can you yeah. see the orchid? Yes. Okay. Now we can. Okay. Um, Trying try to make it bigger. Okay. Uh, this was the first one. I'm going to run down the list. Um, there's good and bad. I always look for this backlit stuff. Um, I like this. I like the dark up against the light. I love this backlighting. I love the colors. I hate this. This is uninteresting. Um, it's behind the tree and the tree's blocking the light. So it's not that, that good. So that's not an option. This one I like, it's just from a different angle. 
uh, got out from behind the tree. It's one, two, three objects, so that's good. Um, I don't like the fact that this orchid is fading, but I could fix that. But I would pull in, and I would add a little more top to this too, to crop. Maybe down about there. Now, I don't know what size this is. Uh, fortunately, I can do custom framing. I frame all my own stuff, cut all my own mats, cut my own plexiglass, cut my glass. Um, I used to cut my frames, don't do that anymore. So I would have to um, try, I try to get this to a standard size because it's just easier. So anyway, this has possibilities. It's not real high on the list, but it has possibilities. Okay. Yeah, um, it's okay. Oh, and somebody was asking about how to stylize. Okay. Yes. Can you see image up here? Can you see that? Uh -huh. Yes. So image, no, it's not, this one is an image. This one's filter, filter, um, stylize. Find edges. Okay, the, the brightness and the contrast washes out um, some of the details. So what you would do is go to image, adjustments, brightness, contrast, and watch what happens when I take the brightness down. There's more stuff. Uh -huh. so you take the Take that over. Now this is a kind of a bad example because um, it's so dark and there's only a couple light areas, but that's that's how you do it. I'll do it with another one too. Okay, let's see. That one's just okay. Uh, um, if I was going to do anything with this one, I would I'd pull this over. I like what's ha happening with that leaf in the background. That's kind of nice. I'd pull this down. Uh, see this this one's not working now because that's what I have to do, but I'm gonna lose the leaf. So that's a little bit better. But this one's still that ah, not blowing my skirt up. So um uh, and I'm going here uh August 1st too. I can't wait. This is Shadow Point, historic Shadow Point in Key Largo. And my brother is coming in from Chicago, oh, help me, um, to go with us. Uh, this one's, uh, you, you might find a composition in here. Oh, and if you wanna use the crop tool, let's say I'm gonna, I wanna do an 11 by 14 of this, just this area. So what I do is I go to the crop tool, I'd go 11, by 14, and then I grab, see these are the edges that you can grab and twist it, which I probably wouldn't do with this one, but then you can just keep going. And just move this up. So that's 11 by 14. To me, it's got too much bottom, so that wouldn't work. Uh, it's not gonna work as a horizontal, so this one's off the table too. But that's how you would do it with the, the crop tool, which is this, one, two, three, for the fourth one down. And then you gotta do your aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is eight by 10 is four by five, four parts by five parts. Nine by 12 is three threes by four threes. So it's three parts by four parts. That's your aspect ratio. So that's the kind of stuff you got. <laughs> Excuse me, watch out for. <clears throat> See what this one looks like. Uh, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with it? How many flowers are there in the grouping? Six. Uh huh. Even number. Boring. And you can't count these. They're too far away. Could you push them up? Yeah. Could you get rid of one of these? And they're overlapping. 
And you'd really, I mean, if I got rid of that, it would just mess up the whole. So that's off the table. <laughs> the proverbial <laughs> raspberry. Pretty, but how many are there? I can't there's actually, tell. There's actually three. And this one is flopping over, so that's it's not a really good candidate. Colors are pretty. Hmm. But look at this place. Look at this. It's on a peninsula in Key Largo. It's two and a half acres. It's been in my girlfriend's family since 1925. Wow. I get to go there. Ah. Okay. Hmm. By the way, my favorite places to take pictures are um, flower, uh, I mean, uh, plant sales, Home Depot. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, it's <laughs> you're photo yeah. bombing in Home Depot. Heck yeah, I certainly am. Oh my. It's still boring. That's not not good at all. Do you ever go down to the Selby Gardens? Not Selby. Oh, now we're talking. Oh. Now nice. we're talking. I don't like this, but I could take it out. One, two, three main. There's actually four. But there's th this composition is beautiful. The light is fantastic. And look at those subtle pinks and stuff in there. Mm. This, this has definite possibilities. One, two, three, four, five. I hate this. The Amber Milliad. Okay, I'll, I'll do the, um, the fine edges on this one. And it'll be, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do uh, mode, oops, mode, grayscale, discard, and I can get it back. And then let's do image, adjustments, posterize. There's four levels. Let's go all the way down to two levels. There's your black and white. <clears throat> There's three levels. There's four levels. You get the picture. Okay, then I'm going to go to say okay. Because I can go all the way up to the top and reopen it and it'll be, all that stuff will be gone. So you can practice on it, just don't save it <laughs> or save it as. Because if you save it as, then you still have your original. Um, let's do filter. Uh, find edges. There we go. Except for this stupid leaf in there. That's going to have to come out. And I go back to image, adjustments, brightness. Slow down. Taking notes. Okay, somebody says repeat. Filter <laughs> stylized what? <laughs> so repeat the steps. Please repeat. Filter stylized what? Go back, wait. Mystery grayscale. Okay. Image. No, just filter. You don't have to do image this time. Filter. Stylize. Mm -hmm. Find edges. There you go. So I would lightly, and I'm going to take the brightness down. Somebody to learn something. Somebody's interested in doing Somebody's something. Somebody's taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I took the brightness down. Like you, you just keep going until, you know, there's all washed out. But I, I, I need, I need this stuff. I need yeah. this stuff. So I would very, I would do the, 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 big shapes and, you know, a more solid line and then just do these little shapes just really lightly because I like to take the graphite off as I go. Uh -huh. Okay, so then I just go back to the top and voila, there it is. There it is. And I think there's only one more. Same, same. 
Yeah, this is at Marlene's house too. Her son Dylan does does the gardening, the orchids. Yeah. That's spectacular. Okay. Great. It. Okay, and I guess we have to go to the ethics questions. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Um, someone did remind us that no tonizer is another thing you can use um, an app on your um, pictures to get grayscale. And I think it also, you can reduce it down to edges as well. Okay. Okay, let's go back to. Thank you for that, by the way. Can, can somebody email me that? I can email it to you. That, you know what it is? Okay. Yeah, I use it and Kathy uses it. Okay. Um, By the way, I think you can do, uh, you can buy Photoshop um, white. El Photoshop elements. Elements for a hundred bucks. Yeah, and, that's a little cheaper. And, and it's got, uh, yeah, <laughs> then the Creative Cloud, yeah, 700 bucks a year. Um, Ouch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, um, everything that I just did in here, is in elements so all those basic tools are in elements so you wouldn't need big photoshop for that okay and i'll have uh, to put the other two and see if i can make them work okay now that i'm looking through that it was quite it was all related to that one artificial intelligence question about using it to create an image with specific attributes and using that and use the image as the starting point for painting. Is that my original work? If you um, use your own elements, if you took the elements that it's working with, because I, I could um, go start pulling orchids off of one and pop them in another on Photoshop. Yeah. So basically you're just asking something to... And someone's asking about um, to find a one day class for the cell phone photos. How to find it? Yeah, I did one online and it wasn't bad. Okay, there. That's even, that's even better. Um, the only difference is showing the instructor your work. Right. Uh, we, like I said, we used to do them at the Elliott. Um, any of the art museums might have them. Uh, you got to say, I don't know where this person lives, so I don't know what this. True. Is. Yeah. But uh, it just depends on what's available in your area. Uh, look on Facebook, ask the question on Facebook, anybody in this such and such area. Um, I'm looking for a one day iPhoneography or iPhone photo taking class. And I know our local art center does it too from time to time. There you go. Yeah. And, and uh, you can get a group together, they'll find an instructor for you. True. Most see, of my, just phone trying my, my phone. Okay. Um, how is the aqua board different from watercolor paper? <laughs> <laughs> how is Yupo different from watercolor paper? <laughs> I mean, it's like slick as owl snot, but um, uh, the aqua board is simulated. Oh. I'm coming back, I promise. Okay. It's kaolin clay coated masonite, hard board, but it is, it's the same thing. And this is an eight by eight, so it's finished nicely on the edges. Um, the kaolin clay traps air bubbles. So um, some people will recommend that you flood the surface to pop the air bubbles because once they start popping under your paint, you get this texture. I love that. <laughs> I never flood it. I always work dry, almost always okay. work dry. There's another one I'm working on on a, on a scrap of, uh, of aqua board. Nice. That's now I cut this myself. <laughs> you think cutting paper's hard? <laughs> I ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, you need a saw blade for that. Oh, no, you can't because you chip the chip the cloth. Oh, you do. Uh -huh. So how do you cut it? Well, from the front, 
uh, I decide what, what shape I want. And then from the front, I measure, as you should see, so I have octagonal frames. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> oh geez girl yep. that one goes in this frame so i had to wow. cut there's no two of these frames alike wow i had to cut and what i do is i cut a, a piece of foam core make the foam core fit and then i use the foam core as a template but what i have to That's do is smart when i cut something off of here I measure very carefully and mark the front and the back. And then on the front, I score like three or four times with a sharp blade. This has to be sharp, not that piece of crap I was using before. And then on the back, I try to find the, the mark on the front, on the sides, and score, 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 till my arm's falling off. And then from the front, edge of the table, and snap it and then huh. you're gonna, i know <laughs> it's kind of like plexi or something huh yeah, try, try doing this <laughs> um well you get the square and then you do the corners so it's it's not right. really, but um but yeah i i kind of invented my own method and if you and you have to do it front to back on the edge or you will if you fold it into itself in the front you're going to chip all right. that clay right the heck off of there wow and you can put um ground watercolor ground on there to repair or crack or something but it's going to take the paint differently than uh painting directly on the aqua board mm -hmm. okay so. um a couple of other people have offered up other app ideas there's a c value app and also Corel Paint Shop Pro has the same functions. Cool. And then one more uh, comment, currently AI is using a data set of existing paintings, drawings, and other art, which would bring up copyright issues. So is it really intelligence or clever learned plagiarism? One could argue that AI art lacks the element of originality. Amen. And that would be true. It didn't exist before it wouldn't exist yeah before. yeah and then marilyn westcott says great demo thanks robin see you in ocala yay yay so with that i just want to remind everyone um that we are working all of us on the board very hard um for the convention that's coming up in nine and a half weeks i'll be here before we know it um, and if you missed out on the Hilton's um, hotel rooms at the lower FWS rate, we have added a couple of um, hotels that have blocked out some rooms for us at an FWS rate um, that are less than a mile away. So check the website for that. Um, so that will help you keep your costs down. Um, we still have a couple of openings for failing lens workshop coming up um, next month um, online. So don't miss that if you um, like the uh, portraits. And we still have openings in our two day workshops. Um, Kathy Durden's uh, decided to add a, a, her second day is changed to figurative painting. So it's expressive portraits and figurative painting on Stonehenge paper. And um, there are still um, slots open in Teresa Kirk's abstract painting, The Beauty of the Mark. So don't miss out on those. Our two days are always really popular. And um, last but not least, if you're coming, please take a couple of hours to volunteer. It's a good way to meet other people. And anything you might miss is being recorded anyway. So we can really use your help because volunteers are what makes this whole thing successful. So, um, and don't forget to bring us some stuff for the Bargain Bazaar. So I know Roberta and Catherine are collecting um, your unused or unwanted art supplies for the Bargain Bazaar. Um, you can contact them via the website and let them know, give them an idea of what you're bringing so they know. 
Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Robin, for a great treat of a, you know, July demo and um, lots of information to digest, too. Yeah, I'm full of something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.